that's interesting. Uh, at least, I mean, I think it should be very comforting for you because you see how the rules of WTO matter. Uh, at the same time, we know there's a problem of governance and a lot of ills. Can we talk a little bit about it? Because um, we see a lot of disruption on, on worldwide stage on trade and WTO is not efficient in, in regulating it. So let's talk about the governance, the ills of this institution, and also we'll try to talk about its remedies. But who wants to first shot on the WTO? Car Carl, he's, yeah, a, um, I, I pick <laughs> he's up the brave where, one. I pick up where we were. Um, the basic rule of the WTO is the most favored nation principle. So you have to afford the same good treatment that you offer to one of the 164 members to all the other members. And the free trade agreements are actually an exemption from it. Mm -hmm. They are an exemption in that you can offer your partner more favorable uh, treaty uh, treatment than you offer the rest. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, justification for allowing this exemption is that you have to cover essentially all trade. And we have a committee that um, deliberates uh, on the notified uh, free trade agreements, and it never produces a result um, that has a critical outcome for the parties, because um, there is not the, the courage for it. Um, so it's lack of political lacks, courage of the institution? Teeth. Yeah, it lacks teeth. Mm. They um, speak about the agreement. Um, the uh, secretariat writes a factual report. The factual report uh, could actually make it very visible that uh, it does not cover essentially all trade. And then the parties, uh, not the parties, the members uh, uh, discuss, but there is no consequence. Uh, before we move to uh, the multilateral trading system, I want to go back to the section 232 on autos. I think uh, USTR gave uh, uh, options to uh, President Trump uh, in May. He extended his decision for, for six months. So these six months will come sometime in November. So given the fact that uh, we, we, we see uh, President Trump is very unpredictable, so by that time, whether he can extend uh, some, some more months or he can, he can declare something. So we Koreans are also concerned about the uh, uh, final decision to be made by uh, President Trump on Section 232, on autos. But the, the advantage of the free trade agreement between the US and Japan was just now described as avoiding a negative. Mm -hmm. It should actually create a positive, positive. but mm -hmm. it's only avoiding a negative. This is not what it's all about. And that too, it goes at least uh, against the spirit of Article 24, which says that uh, parties engaging in uh, preferential trade agreements should actually lower their, their tariffs. Uh, and if that's not happening, de facto the opposite is happening. Maybe if you, if you throw in a rules of origin, uh, that is certainly not in the, in the spirit of the, of the article. But if we're talking about the WTO, I think um, it's very easy to blame the WTO, but who is the WTO? No? It, it's, 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 a member, it's a member-driven organization, and mm -hmm. we, you know, when we comment about it, we often forget that. No? We blame mm -hmm. the WTO, the WTO is inefficient, it doesn't enforce its rules, et cetera, et cetera. But then it's just the sum of its 164 members, and uh, so and then you know everyone, including the even the Europeans, that are very at least pay lip service. Vocal, yeah, yes, yeah, uh, they, they have uh, a lot Mr. to Mr. Watanabe, and then Marcus Nolan. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, one additional comment on this Japan-U.S. Uh, recent agreement on Japan-U.S. Uh, uh, trade deal. Uh, one of the uh, major sort of misgivings of uh, this agreement is. Uh, is the fact that the uh, uh, United States could not offer the uh, uh, zero duty treatment on the parts of the uh, parts and components for car industries that the uh, United States offered uh, in TPP-12 negotiation that was concluded in mm -hmm. October 2015. So uh, you see the entire, uh, you know, the passenger car uh, duty uh, is 2.5%. Mm -hmm. uh, even in a TPP-12 agreement, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, there was um, uh, the uh, phasing out of 2.5% uh, duties over 25 years, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but instead, for the car parts and components, uh, Japan got uh, more than 87% of the tariff lines uh, dealing with uh, the car parts have been subject to uh, zero duty. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, immediate uh, duty elimination. 
Uh, that was the agreement in October 2015. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing that we couldn't get. And mm -hmm. that is the major sort of misgivings, I would thought. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Vartis, you wanted to add something? Yeah, so the WTO has all sorts of problems. But the WTO is only as good as its membership. And I want to reemphasize a point I made at the outset, which is that for 80 years, the United States government tried to promote a open, liberal, rules-based trade system. Wasn't always effective, didn't always, you know, always adhere to its own uh, norms, but it was basically supportive of that kind of system. That changed in 2016. Uh, we now have a government that would be perfectly happy to watch the WTO strangle by simply not appointing appellate judges. Um, yeah, we're going to come to that. And, and, and so the question is why? Mm. What changed in the United States? And is it aberrant? And can we expect a reversion to the norm? Or is this the future? Because if this is the future, then it really poses a different set of questions for the system. Mm. There is a, a growing body of scholarly analysis in the United States that tries to explain this shift. I've done some of it. Jeff Frieden, who's sitting out in the audience, has done yeah. some of it. Some of it is based on looking at individual voter preference. Some of it is done using analyzing county level uh, voting patterns. Some of it is experimental. And the lessons that seem to be emerging from that, um, that uh, work are actually quite disturbing. The turn towards protectionism in the United States seems to be based on a pernicious sense of victimhood, and a victimhood in two different channels. One is, is usual, that would be familiar to everybody in this room. Import competing sectors, especially declining industries, are getting hurt by imports. They want protection. And if you look at the Trump administration, a lot of the people in it or his advisors are uh, people who were uh, owners or managers in declining uh, uh, industrial sectors of the US economy. But the other one is at the individual level. And what it seems, th the evidence seems to suggest is that this turn towards protection is very much um, driven by or associated with uh, white identity politics or racism. And really? it's the notion that uh, uh, a growing anxiety among part of the white population in the United States about loss of group status, loss of their ability to control the system uh, for their own benefits at the individual level. And then that is reinforced by a sense among the elites who have these ideas of declining US uh, status at the international level. And the fact that China p is both regarded as an economic and geopolitical rival mm -hmm. means that that is where you, where you get the focus on China. So looking for, to, towards the future, obviously a, an electoral strategy that, that emphasizes anger in the white population is demographically a losing hand in the long run, mm -hmm. uh, whether it can work in 2020 or not. Um, if, if, if Trump is able to avoid impeachment and does get reelected, then I think the second term it will be Katie bar to the door on the kind of issues that we're discussing. Can you tell us what that means exactly? It means, <laughs> it, means, it, means it means closed <laughs> down because catastrophe is happening. Okay. Um, if the Democrats win, that's, that's no nirvana because uh, while the Democrats, uh, uh, and, there's a, and these are not just my opinion, there's a lot of data to support this, are much more positively inclined towards international cooperation, um, their views on trade are not necessarily liberal. And if you've got certain candidates and certain people, you could get a pretty reasonable trade policy. But if you get some of the others, uh, it could be quite challenging as well. So the, the, few, the political economy in the United States, future outcomes range from kind of OK to disaster. disaster. Well, that, that's very comforting. Yeah, Gabriel, you wanted to add something, and then Mr. Tark? Yeah, I just wanted Mark, to say that, that there, is only, there is certainly this, this um, uh, international US-centered uh, uh, discussion mm -hmm. about the white, uh, uh, grumpy man. Uh, but, but there's also, and I think here's where the Republicans and the Democrats uh, converge, there's also this uh, geo strategic issue with China. No? So when, the, the, when China entered into the WTO in 2001, uh, no one really envisaged that uh, in a period of 15 years or so, they would be able to challenge 
uh, the United States by having an, an economy that uh, uh, is almost as big and growing twice as, as fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is, uh, there is, there is uh, and this sheer strategic uh, discussion will not stop, uh, mm -hmm. and it will not stop uh, uh, when there is a different uh, person in the White House. Mm -hmm. And it also has implications for Europe, of course, because uh, uh, we too must uh, ask ourselves, and we have seen the session here today uh, about you know the uh, the values and democracy. You know, that that uh, I think these are these are important uh, important components uh, mm -hmm. too in this in this discussion, and that uh, don't uh, uh, lend to very much optimism neither, because that geostrategic strategic struggle, which is not just about power, military economic power, is also about values that that won't go away. Mm. Mark. Okay, uh, I want to remind you that uh, we are very sorry to talk about WTO in Marrakesh because, uh, you know, 1994, Marrakesh had a meeting to produce WTO. You know, now we talk about the you know, gloomy aspect of WTO. <laughs> in fact, uh, seven years ago, I visited Rabat uh, mm -hmm. to have a bilateral uh, minister's meeting, and then they asked me, where do you want to go uh, after uh, Rabat? I want to see Marrakesh because uh, Marrakesh is the place uh, who produced uh, the, the WTO. Yeah. We came here and tried to find which hotel hosted this <laughs> ministerial <laughs> conference. I, I forgot the name, but huge uh, hotel. That's a pity, yeah. Huge hotel. <laughs> and some hotel manager come down and explain about the hotel. Yeah. So I said, do you know this place? Uh, you know, we have a meeting for WTO. He asked me, what is WTO? Oh, no, So no. there's no, <laughs> no plot, no any, anything, uh, no so plague, it's a pity, yeah. you know, so in any case. Uh, well, it's a good time you're here to, you know, give it uh, the right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm also very, you know, pessimistic uh, about uh, for, 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 for future. I'm sorry, to, uh, you know, no, Mr. Carl's Brown is gonna, here. I see we have 15 minutes left, so Carl is going to speak, and we're going to talk a little bit about the settlement problem with the WTO, and then we'll open up for questions. Okay. I, I want to say that the U.S. has been the positive leader for more than 70 years in trade policy, starting before the GATT, and uh, they have used trade policy as an element of their foreign policy, as an instrument of peace policy, and um, if the U.S. takes this role that you have described just now, um, this does not solve the real issue because it only deals with the external elements that are um, um, the challenges for the U.S. The real challenges are inside the U.S. You, the, the problem is America is not great anymore. When America was great, they could behave in the way they behaved as positive leaders. And to make America great again, is not happening via external conflicts. Mm. And it's, well, it comes back to the disgruntled, you know, white people you were talking about who elected Trump and, and expressed that. Um, but uh, somewhere uh, America has been expected is on this uh, appointing judges for the WTO because it's the only way for countries to, to settle their differences. And we know that this, uh, this part of your organization is really at a standstill and in December, if no judge is appointed, uh, it's gone, it's dead. So uh, what can we do about this? <laughs> Long I silence. Mean, um, th this problem has started in 2017. Um, and um, I think the uh, efforts to resolve the issue have started pretty late. Right now we are having a group of uh, countries that are under the leadership of the New Zealand ambassador trying to um, tackle issues on a technical level. And here I would come to the, um, one of the elements of uh, the title of our meeting this afternoon, Trust. Mm -hmm. um, one could uh, try to rebuild trust by solving a few of the technical issues. Um, and one has to get the Europeans and the, the um, Americans uh, talking to one another because I think the Europeans have uh, made some uh, very good proposals picking up all the grievances of the Americans one by one without saying that they share the concern but they offer um, some approach to it. Um, but the Americans are not yet engaging and I must say my uh, suspicion is 
they have other issues. They are dealing with China, they are dealing with uh, USMCA, and the WTO is a third priority mm -hmm. for them at this point in time. <laughs>